You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. Hair metal was long gone when the darkness exploded onto the airwaves. Armed with Queen-inspired guitar solos and an unforgettable music video, they were destined for superstardom, and they achieved it, in the UK. But in the States, they never had another hit after the iconic I Believe in a Thing Called Love. I'm joined by Punchline drummer Corey Muro to discuss why we can't explain all the things the band makes us feel. So, Corey, you picked the song where it's one of those unique situations where we are going to have some people complaining, saying this isn't a one hit wonder. But based on United States chart performance, we're going to go ahead and say this qualifies as a one hit wonder, but maybe it falls in the same category as something like Mighty Mighty Boston's The Impression That I Get, whereas I'm a huge fan of that band. But regardless, that was their one big song that everybody knows. So maybe this is that situation for you as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think... I would be one of those people probably if I wasn't on this podcast and was listening um, because I happen to be just an enormous Darkness fan and uh, I think their catalog is incredible. I wouldn't even put this song as maybe top three, five favorites of mine of theirs, but it's an amazing song and yeah, it's definitely a wonder. Yeah, you chose it and it qualifies and I still can remember the first time I heard this song because I saw the music video at the same time. And I think that's a lot of people's first experience with this song. Just seeing the wall of uh, Marshall cabs and just like the craziness of this video and being like, what is this? Wow. This yeah. is amazing. I just remember too, like experiencing, you know, your parents, your uncles and aunts, they all told you stories about living through when like, you know, rock and hair metal was such a big thing. But I almost felt, the darkness makes me feel like I got to experience that time in music every time they put a record out. Right. And I actually think that the darkness is better than I'm going to go as far as to say all of the hair metal bands, the ones from the actual eighties. And I always wondered, and I asked you this earlier before we started recording, are they serious or are they doing it tongue in cheek, like the whole image of the darkness? Are they just badass musicians and songwriters who are like, okay, we're going to do these badass songs. We're going to do it in this style because we know we can kill it, but we know what's up. Or are they authentic, like dudes with long hair that like came from that and are just doing that without knowing that there's like a funny aspect to it. Yeah. I mean, I just know that it, they are serious, uh, which makes them so much more genuine and like, you know, and I don't know, I don't even have a problem with like shtick bands, a band that actually is kind of relevant to the darkness. And, uh, Justin sings on some of their stuff is still Panther. That's who I was going to bring up. And they clearly, it's a shtick for them. I still love that band and think they're incredible, but I like the darkness way more. Because it's not a shick. And actually, we were talking a little early before we started recording. And the fact that, you know, when they first came on the scene in the UK, there was like a only, only, I think it's funny when you hear these stories of bands where they talk about like only a couple major labels were interested in our band. It's like, well, that would be nice, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, the problem they had was that all these labels at the time, oh, it was probably around like 2002. Uh, 2003 ish they did think that they were a joke and like weren't interested in that and uh i totally agree with you and not only would i say that they're not a joke i would go as far as saying they're the best band of any band like them from any era of music 
minus queen yeah <laughs> because they yeah. are def- there's definitely a queen influence in Absolutely. the darkness yeah and justin hawkins uh the singer he, he talks about how like brian may was why he started playing music he wanted to just play guitar like brian may right which that makes it a lot cooler when you compare him to queen as i personally and i might be in the minority when i say this but i can't stand hair metal i at that time, I was a real <laughs> little kid in the 80s, and I preferred boys to men or whatever, like like R&B <laughs> music. And maybe, you know, when hair metal was out, I There's liked- not much hair in boys to men. I, I liked Huey Lewis in the news, you know? No, and yeah, absolutely, I, yeah. That, that was what I would lean towards. And as far as the hair metal, I think I saw through it even as a young kid. Maybe, yeah. maybe there's a few good songs here and there, but there was a lot of trash in there. And the image and the just- craziness and being assholes and things totally. like that. that yeah, I don't think there was many good role models in that no, music scene. No, Striper. But some great music. Uh, I too, I'm not like, never was like a huge hair metal fan or anything like that. Uh, but a lot of my uncles and aunts growing up, that's what they were into. I was, I was definitely exposed to that music at a very early age. And I do think that it had a big reason to do with my love of music. And I'm kind of with you. There's a lot of songs that I love and are great, but I, Never really have like listened front to back of a lot of hair metal records and stuff. But The Darkness, I do. I right. love every record they put out. I love 98% of their songs. Um, they're great songwriters, great musicians, super cool dudes. And I mean, what else can you really ask for? Right. I mean, and this song is such a beloved song. You put this, this is like the ultimate party song. Oh, yeah. Most people love this song. And it's a, fun one to sing along to as much as you can sing along to it. I think it, it, it is or should be on every single wedding playlist right. or played at every wedding. It was played at mine. Yeah. Me and you probably <laughs> we, were pretty sweaty dancing yeah, to it. I'm sure we were. <laughs> exactly. And it, it makes you feel good. It's musically, it's insane. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It, and everything about it musically down to the structure of the song. It's not what a single should be or not not that a single should be anything but there are some aspects of this song like two or three guitar there's a solo after the first chorus that just wasn't in music in 2003 yeah on huge songs right and that's where it gets to like taking things to the extreme you know that's yeah that's the songwriting equivalent of having a giant stack of marshall cabs <laughs> behind you when when you're playing it's just yeah doing everything to 11 you know everything is just so extreme from the the notes that he hits to yeah to the guitar leads and guitar solos to just everything about the song is just taken to the extreme and it just and that could be a very bad thing oh sure done by the wrong people that could be a very bad thing but this song is just the perfect example of that yeah and you and i I'm sure, you, like like you said earlier, this isn't even your favorite Darkness song. On this same album, there was a song, which was a single they released that didn't catch on the way this one did. But growing on me, man, growing on me is it's a it's a it's a ten out of ten. That song is so good, such a great song. It also had a ridiculous music video, but didn't catch quite the way this yeah, song did. For sure, yeah, I listened to it the whole record last night on vinyl, and it just like it just felt. So right. And this song definitely, so this song came out in, oh wait. So I think it was on like a three song kind of like EP okay. thing that had like the Christmas song on it too, but because it, I guess there's rules about how many songs have to be on something for it to be up for running for like billboard and everything. Uh-huh. So it didn't chart until permission to land came out. Okay. Uh, and it was actually the third single off of permission to land, but it had been out before permission to land. But in the UK, the darkness are a much bigger band. Yeah. So I believe in a thing called love and this Christmas song that I just heard for the first time today. Yeah. We're both hit number two. In yeah. The they UK. both went to number two. Yeah. Whereas in the United States, it wasn't quite as much. This was more of like a, the song peaked at number 67. Yeah, which is building. crazy because, like, I mean, I remember the song being enormous in the U.S. I remember it being on the video, being on TV all the time. It's very surprising to me that it, it didn't get higher than that. And right. I, I want to interject. Yeah. It peaked at number 67, which was its highest chart position ever in 2012 wow. because it appeared on a Doritos commercial and oh it caused people gosh. to buy the single for a wow. week. Great fact. <laughs> like, Once again, which we've 
said a lot on this show, a billboard performance of a song doesn't necessarily contribute to whether it was a one hit wonder or because th- yeah. that, that's just when it came out yeah. is, yeah, is yeah. how high it, or, or at its peak. But the legacy of the song yeah. is a lot of times it can take on a whole new life and that does nothing to really do with the billboard charts you know yeah and i don't think the song is is going anywhere i think we'll still be hearing it right for till we die right uh we talked we talked a little earlier about how you had a personal experience with the darkness which i think is pretty funny so if anyone yeah it's interesting to know sometimes is the band who's playing the music that i like or the artist that's singing the song are they actually like cool and a lot of times i don't like to meet people uh, i know it's music. like it's like the role the golden role like you know you're supposed to not meet your idols because right. it could really go bad and i think everyone has a story where meeting someone they really liked has gone bad and just totally tarred that person forever and Corey, who's wearing a darkness baseball tee yeah. right now you have a story about meeting the darkness so if anyone out there had any questions about it, it you could tell us about an intoxicated Corey meeting the darkness <laughs> Yeah, so I've seen The Darkness twice in Pittsburgh. One time I saw them at Altar Bar, which is a venue that's closed now in Pittsburgh. That punchline has played many shows at. I hung out there all the time. All my friends worked there. So I kind of had like free reign of whatever I wanted to do at the venue, which looking back on it was a horrible idea. Uh, Someone should have like set rules for me there. So yeah, they played Altar Bar, which is about a 600... I think it was about 600 cap room, which it probably should have been like 400. Uh, So 600 people in there. It it was crazy packed. Drinking all night. And our buddies, Banji and the Werewolf, uh, they had opened the show. But because I had this free reign over the place, as soon as the darkness was done playing, I had this great idea in my intoxicated mind that I was just going to go down into the green room. And just sit there and wait for the darkness to come down and tell them how much... In their backstage area. In their green room and say, let them know, profess my love to them, you know? They came in. They were very confused about this uh, drunk kid <laughs> hanging out in their, their dressing room. And I just told them, you know, I'm a huge fan. Thank you guys for, like, doing this crazy band that I love so much. And they were super nice. They thanked me for listening to their band, for coming out to the show, and then very politely asked me to leave the (laughs) green room, which I did. And uh, very happy that that didn't go bad. Right. (laughs) That could have very easily gone bad. (laughs) They could have thought you were trying to steal their backpacks or something. (laughs) I didn't even, never even crossed my mind. Yeah. Right. Like they probably had personal possessions everywhere right. down there yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> and i don't i don't even know how we would respond to that <laughs> and we are nowhere nearly near as popular as the darkness so. yeah i wouldn't have been as nice as the darkness was probably right yeah. but you know the legacy definitely lives on of this band as far as the front man justin i remember when we toured with the gin blossoms robin talking about how justin is his favorite he's the singer. best man yeah seeing them live uh, it's another thing i'll say about them is you know, bands you love, you want them to be cool people, and you also want them to be good live. And The Darkness, I uh, have no problem going on record saying The Darkness is the best live band I have ever seen in wow. my entire life. Seen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of bands. Just it has everything, man. The energy of their shows, the, the, the stage production, the outfits. Justin wears you know, crazy stuff. He's doing stuff, uh, you know, standing on his head in front of the bass drum. And they're just so tight and it's just so honest and raw and everything down to the guitar tones i mean like they just use the classic stuff of course they're playing les pauls and marshall jmps like so any idea goes right out the window of them being a joke band or you know not a single joke about it yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) so let me ask you then why in the united states is i believe a thing called love the only real hit What's the deal? I don't know, man. I, I guess we could just sum it up to the U.S. just wasn't ready for the, the darkness. Right. You know, I, I don't have another reason. There's no reason that it, that should be the case. Anyone, I mean, I'm sure there's people listening to this who obviously know this song, but might not know their back catalog. Um, and I highly suggest you go listen to it because there's just some amazing stuff on there. Hi, this is Krista Makes, host of Krista Makes a Podcast. The theme of the podcast is songwriting. Each week, my musical guest picks a defining song from their career to discuss, critique, and analyze during the show. So please join me for some fun and insight into some of the greatest songs ever written and recorded. Listen and subscribe at SoundTalentMedia.com. The number one 
number you have reached is 100.7 WMMS. It wasn't just a radio station, it was a lifestyle. Cleveland is, is a rock and roll city for sure. Yeah! Down! Yeah! The Wrath of Man. The Buzzer. WMMS. Cleveland. The rise and fall of one of the most iconic radio stations in America. Profiles. The Wrath of the Buzzard. P-R-O-H Files. Subscribe now wherever you get podcasts. Uh, like the second record after this, One Way Ticket to Hell and Back. It's perfect from beginning to end. There's some crazy epic stuff on there. The one song starts with, uh, if you can hear Justin Hawkins, I would assume it's Justin Hawkins, is, is like breaking up some cocaine and then you hear him like move it around with his card. And then it it's... the they sampled him snorting cocaine and then just started into the song. Like, that's insane. Yeah. And then he quit the band after this, that record to go to rehab for cocaine. Wow. So (laughs) that, (laughs) that, that's the kind of thing though, that might make someone say like, Oh, this is all a goofy. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Yeah. (laughs) But when, when you quit the band to go to rehab for cocaine, it's not a joke. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, I don't know. Not that I'm condoning that or thinking, I guess, I mean, I actually am kind of saying that I think that's cool, but (laughs) it's funny. It's It's funny. It's definitely funny. It's funny. We can all agree on that. It's creative. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that any uh, impressionable children are listening to the darkness. <laughs> okay, good. I was going to ask you. <laughs> oh, no. I don't How think many children listen to your podcast? Uh, first of all, no children are listening to this podcast. <laughs> Second of all, no children are really listening to the darkness, I don't think. Which is the problem. It's the big problem. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they may need to. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe they're not appealing to kids. I, I don't know what, what the problem is there. I mean, maybe you did just solve it. Maybe the, the crowd that would have been very accepting of the darkness just were more worried about going to work than really b- getting behind the darkness and hmm. the kids were kind of like this is a joke and they just didn't know that it wasn't wow I don't know. yeah i don't i don't know i but i guess the popularity of this song has allowed them to have a long career regardless yeah, definitely. that that they're gonna they're gonna play shows and the shows are gonna be packed yeah, uh, but they are on the club circuit. So I will say they're on the club circuit. I was very surprised. Um, they played at a place called Stage AE in Pittsburgh, which is bigger than Alter Bar. Uh, the Alter Bar show was was insanely packed. But Stage AE, I think indoors is about two thousand capacity, probably. Right. But when I saw them there, the room felt very unpacked. Um, so much that I was front row. Also very drunk. Uh, right. <laughs> I had the time of my life, but I do remember thinking to myself, like, if they come back, this venue is too big for them. I don't know if that's a disheartening or if that's whatever, but you to have a song that popular yeah. and not be able to, I don't know, to, to break through. Yeah, cl- Stage A.E., the place you're talking about, it's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about 2,000 cap room, yeah. that that might be a little bit too bigger, too big. For the darkness, but at the same time, like it's Pittsburgh. It's not True. like the music yeah. capital of the world. And yeah, but it's knows? also also like Pittsburgh is a city where I would think they might not be huge all over those states, but Pittsburgh's yeah. a city I would think they would be big in. Where we have one of the biggest classic rock uh, radio stations in the country, um, and they, you know Yinzers, which is what we call Pittsburgh people. We love classic rock, so I would have hoped that Pittsburgh would have accepted the darkness. But I mean. I did, and that's enough for me. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's all that matters. We don't. <laughs> the, the amount of people at the shows isn't what really matters. No, it's, no. it's how good the music is. Yeah, and it's good. I don't know as far as you know what else was going on at the time when the darkness came out. Like why it had its modest success at the yeah. time. You know, as Matt brought up, it pe- it's it peaked at number sixty seven, but that was whatever however many years yeah, after that's the fact crazy so it's like when it was on the rate when like we were hearing it in 2003 four when it came out like it's so crazy that it was even lower on the charts than 67 yeah. well it was number 35 on the top 40 pop charts okay in april of 2004 and at that time i'm gonna be honest i don't really understand all these charts or what they mean or what they do the, i think the charts back <laughs> then were a little bit truer to how many radio spins people gotcha. were getting and record sales are probably yeah, makes corporate. Sense. But now there's probably a whole different formula with streaming and things like that. But at, at that time when it hit its pop chart peak, 
Toxic by Britney Spears was the number one gotcha. song in America. Well, I mean, that explains a lot, yeah. And that, that year, well, the year before 2003 when it came out, the number one album was 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. Okay. So, so that's kind of the I mean, that landscape. helps understand. Yeah. 50 Cent and <laughs> Britney Spears were out there doing their thing and, and at their, I don't know yeah. if it was Britney's peak, but... Well, another thing uh, talking about like the record sales and stuff too, um, obviously it didn't work too much of their favorite in the u.s but this really blew my mind and i think they were kind of right, right around that area it was when records se- streaming started to become a thing you know mm-hmm. but they came in right before and this blew my mind they sold 1.5 million copies of permission to land in the uk in the uk yeah wow that's a lot that is a crazy <laughs> that's a lot in the united states so it went uh quadruple platinum in the uk wow how many people live in the UK as as opposed as compared to the United States? Do you know? Yeah, let's see. So it looks to be about sixty eight million people live in the UK. Okay, so sixty eight million, and you said one point five million. One point five million, yeah. And so it and when it came out, it went straight to number two in the UK on its release day, and then it ended up going to number one, and it stayed there for four weeks. Wow, the record, yeah. W- one and a half, three. How many times is three? I'm trying to do some quick math in my head. <laughs> What percentage of people that live in the UK bought this album? And it's crazy too. I mean, I know it obviously clearly it's more than like the one percent or whatever. But like in bands like on the business end of thing of yeah. bands, we always talk about like all we need to do is get, you know, half a percent of people in this country to like our band and we'll be super successful. And it's yeah. true. Yeah. And that that's the crazy yeah. thing about it like that. Over one percent of the people yeah. in the UK bought this album. Yep. That's that's an important yep. stat. Absolutely. Because if 330 million people live in the United States and you sell, sell a million, that's 0.3% of the yeah. people in the United States. If they buy your album, you're you're mega successful. You have yeah. a you have a platinum you're good album. You're to go. Yeah. And the darkness managed to do about five times that as far as percentage of people yeah. that live there. So they were massive in the UK and still are to to this day, I'm sure. I've right. seen them play, you know, the the big outdoor festivals, Reading and those, and it's just right. insane. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. There's man. some good, too. They put out a, they have a, a live record they put out that's amazing. Um, highly suggest just sitting at your house watching uh, Darkness videos on YouTube like I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you know about the Darkness mega fan? I'm only, I'm such like, a, I mean, I do got some notes. I, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a I mean, passive fan. I like them. So, A, Permission to Land, and I think the second one, uh, you know, when we take it to hell and back, I'm pretty sure that they recorded those all on tape, which mm-hmm. to any of the, you know, recording fans and stuff out there, it's super cool. When I listened to it on vinyl yesterday, it was, uh, it was just so warm sounding, like those guitar tones, the drums. And it's weird because like the drums, as far as like if, if we were going to record drums, if like those drum sounds were the drum sounds that we got for like our record, I would probably be like, those sound shitty. Mm-hmm. But when you're the darkness and you're recording the tape and you just have this whole vibe going on, those drums sound amazing. And what you should listen to is for some reason, the bass parts were really coming through my speakers last night. And Mm -hmm. there is some just insanely tasteful bass parts in in like all the songs stuff that I never really realized was there. I could imagine that every note of, a darkness album is well thought out. Yeah. (laughs) And it comes through on a song like this. Definitely. So yeah, they put out the one way, one way ticket to hell and back. And like I said, Justin Hawkins after that went to rehab for alcohol and cocaine, I think. So they didn't put out a record until 2012, but between there, the other members started a band uh, called Stone Gods, I think they were called. Yeah, it's a bit butt rocky. I love the guitar. I loved everything but the vocals. <laughs> right. So it just yeah makes losing, sense, you know. Losing those vocals, man. That's regardless of how yeah. good the music is. That absolutely is definitely the most notable thing about the darkness. And if you read about the darkness online, um, like their Wikipedia and whatever sites, like they love talking about how. Justin sings in in falsetto a lot, and mm-hmm. they like they all, every article I've like written about like someone was like I'm gonna write about the darkness. That they always talk about how he sings in falsetto all the time, and, and his head voice and stuff is like a big thing. So, but he started another band too and put out music. I'd never heard it. It's not streaming. I would love to hear it. Yeah, and the name of that band was um, Hot Leg. Mm-hmm. That was like Justin's solo thing. So they got back together in 2012, put out a record called Hot Cakes. I nice. love it. The uh, The artwork is like a hot chick on pancakes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So perfect, yeah. Yeah, well, that's cool. I mean, 
the the thing about the darkness is uh, we're considering them a one hit wonder, but maybe they could have another hit if they're yeah. making qual. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it their time may have passed to have another hit. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would love to see it. The last record they put out was called Easter is Cancelled, which ended up actually being true because uh, they put <laughs> yeah. it out right at the end of 2019. Wow. So maybe they had something to do with what's going on. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I guess you brought up one memory. As far as like all this stuff, yeah, this this is all cool. But as far as your your you have some personal good memories. What between your wedding reception and mm-hmm. meeting the darkness and things like that? Do you remember the first time you heard this song? I feel like the first time I heard this song was on TV. I don't know. I guess back then would would have MTV been like spinning videos still? Oh yeah, then? I saw this on MTV. Okay, then yeah, I think it was just actually probably at my aunt's house which i hung out at every day uh i didn't have cable tv at my house so i have to go over there to watch everything and i guess i kind of do i definitely can envision myself watching it on the video on tv and originally thinking what I, what everyone thinks when they see it for the first time probably that a this is ridiculous b it's, it's, it's just is a stick and c i love it it's a great song yeah you know yeah yeah i don't understand how anyone could not like this song yeah i don't know i the only argument i could see for it is someone saying like oh this is this is cheesy because it's it's fake it's yeah. it's not authentic or something for but sure the songwriting and the performance yeah on the song is just too good to the point where even if it was some sort of jokey type thing like damn you did a perfect <laughs> job and no one will ever top the job you did and you've been that. Very committed to that joke for years right. and years and years. Right. So if it's a joke, it's a really good joke. And it could, I mean, honestly, the only thing jokey about it probably is the fact that it happened so far after that <laughs> yeah. was the thing. Whereas a lot of it, when it was happening is way more of a joke to me anyway, for <laughs> way sure, more yeah. of a joke based on the image of the bands and the, the, the music video, you know, like too, like if you really think about it, like what, what was like the whole message of like that hair metal thing? It was like really like rebel against what's the norm, like rebel, you know? And so honestly, when it comes down to it, the darkness is probably more hair metal and rock than any of those bands because they were all doing it at the same time. The darkness came out in 2003 and did it. They weren't rebelling against anything. You know? They were they were putting on the makeup and the spandex and making exactly the, yeah. making the music videos and trying to get signed to a major uh-huh. label to be to have a corporation push <laughs> them out. They weren't they weren't they were playing the game. And the darkness is like what, fifty cents number one record. And then, all right, right, let me do this. Right, they're yeah. doing their own thing. They were a lot more punk rock than the absolutely yeah. than the hair metals of the eighties. Yeah. They they did it. They knew what they liked. They did it, and were really good at it. So. When it comes down to it, man, I got to give them the thunder st- oh, it's, stamp of approval. They're thunder. It's, it's thunderous. It's very thunderous. Thunderous. The darkness, yeah. yeah. No blunder. No blunder coming from us when it comes to the dark. Oh, you know what I love too? This is something they do. Uh, we just got to mention this. At, at all their shows, they, they come out and they start the show with by doing, give me a, give me a D. And everyone's like, D. I think they do give me an A. But then he just like puts it all together at the end and goes, give me an Arkness. And everyone goes, Arkness. And then they just f- rock. It's nice. awesome. But it's like, that's like their thing they do. Nice. And it gets, it gets you pumped. That's great, yeah. man. Cool. Well, thanks for coming we on. We should man. do, give me a P, <laughs> give me an Unch line. Yep. <laughs> give me an O. <laughs> give me a wonder. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Thunder. I don't know. That's a bad ending. But. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, originally uh, we were going to do a different song and then someone else did it. But yeah. honestly, I, I'm happy that that happened because you got the rug pulled under from uh, under you for uh, past the duchy. <laughs> yeah, I, I did want to do past the duchy. But looking back on it, I uh, like that song. And then the other one song we sang in the sprinter together, uh, I forget the name of it, but another good song from musical. But if I really would have thought about it, this is what the song I should have nice. done. Hell yeah. So yeah. the universe figured that out. Yeah, yeah. man. Hell yeah. Frostbite. You are an icicle. You are an icicle. World of the season can't You are an icicle. You are an icicle. Coldest that I've ever known. This has been.
been One Hit Thunder. One Hit Thunder is hosted by Chris Fafayus of the bands Punchline, Pack, and Another Cheetah and produced by Matt Kelly of Geekscape.net. Underneath me, you're hearing Punchline's holiday classic, Icicles. Let us know your thoughts on the show by emailing us at onehitthunderpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. And tune in next week for another episode of One Hit Thunder. listening to the Geekscape Network. Hi, podcast listeners. I'm Carol Costello, a former CNN anchor and national correspondent. This January, I'm launching a podcast about one of the first cases I ever covered as a journalist. It's one that stuck with me all of these years, the one that buried itself under my skin and stayed put. It's a true crime series about an amazing woman named Phyllis Cottle who defied torture and death and brought a fierce rage to the quest to find her attacker. Carol Costello Presents Blind Rage is a production of Evergreen Podcasts and signature title of the Killer Podcast Network. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Discover more great true crime and paranormal programming at killerpodcast.com. The number you have reached is 100.7 WMMS. It wasn't just a radio station, it was a lifestyle. Cleveland is, is a rock and roll city for sure. I do like the shadows. Yeah! Down! The Wrath of the Buzzer. WMMS. Cleveland. The rise and fall of one of the most iconic radio stations in America. Profiles. The Wrath of the Buzzard. P-R-O-H Files. Subscribe now wherever you get podcasts.